EEL stands for Exobiology Extant Life Surveyor. Exobiology is another word for astrobiology. Um, it just made more sense with the acronym. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a snake-like robot. It's a large robot about the size of an anaconda. And the reason that we are developing and building this is because it can access some of these hard-to-reach places. What we've realized with a lot of our Mars rovers, which are great, they're making incredible discoveries every day, but it's hard for them to get up certain steep slopes or down into places where life might be hiding, like like cracks or caves or uh, things like that. And so being able to design something that can more easily uh, get into those, those kind of um, craggy, rocky, uh, really extreme areas is something that we'd like to improve our capabilities of doing. And this is not just for looking for life on other worlds. Robots like this can be used on Earth too. And in fact, we're developing a smaller version that we're calling garden eels because it's like garden snake <laughs> size that could fit in a backpack that, say, um, an avalanche or earthquake rescue person could use. If they get to an area that's looking too dangerous for a person to go, they could just chuck this down in, do a little bit of recon, figure out if it's safe or if there's someone in need of help, uh, and be able to, to use it that way. So there are all sorts of different applications for kind of technology like this. And we recently took eels, we've taken it to a couple of places. We've taken it to Death Valley uh, to be able to see how it can handle some of the really gnarly terrain of like Devil's Golf Course, uh, which we think might be a good analog for some surfaces of, say, Europa um, or Enceladus, where there could be really, really um, salt-enriched pockets. We've also taken it to glaciers, some of them in the U.S., some of them outside in Canada, uh, where we can test it not only on the top of the glacier, but down these holes that glaciers have called moulins, uh, which we think are a fairly decent analog for some places like Enceladus that have cracks in the ice and vents and plume activity coming from a subsurface ocean. And so it's been really fun to test that robot, to learn what it does well, what it needs help in doing, um, and do some meaningful earth science along the way too.